Good morning, my dear students. I hope that all of you are doing great today. We will revise the structures you've learned in module three, four, and five. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to recall structures from module three, four, and five. Let's start with module three structures. Do you remember what you've studied in this module? You're right, present progressive. So let's recall it together. What are you doing? I'm reading a book. Are they speaking? No, they aren't. What are they doing? They are studying. Is he feeding the dog? No, he isn't. What is he doing? He's playing with the dog. So when we use present progressive, excellent. We use it for talking or asking about actions happening now at the moment of speaking. How can we say a sentence talking about what's happening now? Wonderful. We start with the subject, for example, I, and then we need a helping to be verb. What to be verb comes with I? Very good, am. Um. Then we need an action verb with an I and G. For example, read, reading. Let's have another example. Subject, he, helping to be verb, is, and a verb. Swim, ming. Most verbs take ing in forming it, as we said in read, reading. But verbs ending in one vowel and one consonant double the consonants before the ing, as in swimming. Let's have another example. Subject, they, helping to be verb, are, verb, Coming. Verbs ending in E drop the E before the ing, as in coming. What if we want to ask someone about what's happening right now? Yes, you're right. We just start with the helping verb to be. Am I reading? Are they swimming? Is he coming? And never forget the question mark, my smart students. You will find more details and examples in your student's book, page 82, the grammar reference. Now let's practice. Look at the pictures, read the questions, and then answer them. But let's do number one together. Is she watching TV? No, she isn't. Then what she's doing? Very good. 
She's feeding the fish. Now pause the video and do the rest by yourself. Ready to check your answers? Let's do it. Number two. Is he watering the flowers? No, he isn't. He's reading a book. Number three. Is she sleeping? No, she isn't. She's making a cake. Number four. Is he having dinner? No, he isn't. He's having breakfast. Now let's go through module four structures. The possessive pronouns and must and mustn't. Let's start with the possessive pronouns. When do we use them? Very good. We use them to show that something belongs to someone. Whose umbrella is it? It's mine. Look at that red car. Whose car is it? It's his. It is mine. To say that it belongs to me. It is yours. To say that it belongs to you. It's his. To indicate for one boy. It's hers. To indicate for one girl. It's ours to indicate for us. It's theirs to indicate for many other people. We also can say they are yours. Or to specify more. These boots are hers. Remember, the possessive pronouns are never followed by a noun. For more examples, please check the grammar reference, page 84. Now let's practice together. These balls are my brothers. They are theirs? No, they are his. Very good. The handbag is Sarah's. It's his? No, Sarah is a girl. It's hers. These books are Ahmed's and Ali's. They are his? No, him? No, Ahmed and Ali, they are theirs. Wonderful. Now let's check your understanding. I want you to fill in the gaps with the correct possessive pronoun. Let's do number one together. One. There is a book on the desk. Is it his, mine, yours or hers? Very good. Yours. Now pause the video and do number two, 
three and four by yourself. Let's check your answers. Number two. Are these Tim's shoes? Yes, they are. His. Excellent. How did you know that? Very good. They are talking about Tim. Number three. I have got two fish. They are mine. Excellent. Because she said, I have got. Number four. She has got a cat. It's hers. Well done. But how did you know that? Very good. Because she is talking about a girl and she said she has got. Well done, everyone. Now let's move on to must and mustn't and recall when do we use them. You must throw the rubbish in the rubbish bin. You mustn't fight. You must be kind to each other. So when do we use must and mustn't? Very good. We use must and mustn't to talk about what is the right way to behave in certain places and situations. You mustn't eat. We must listen. For more examples, please check the grammar reference, page 85, in your student's book. Now let's practice together. We must or mustn't listen to our teacher. Very good. Must. You must or mustn't run in the school. Excellent! You mustn't. You must or mustn't take photos in the museum. You're right! Mustn't. Now let's see if you understood. Look at the signs and the pictures, then write what they must or mustn't do. Let's do number one together. One, you, look at the sign. Very good, throw rubbish in the park. So must or mustn't? Yes, mustn't. You mustn't to throw rubbish in the park. Now post the video and do the rest by yourself. Let's check your answers now. Two. You mustn't eat or drink in the bookshop. Three. You must be quiet. The baby is sleeping. Number four, you mustn't take photos in the museum. Great job, my students. And finally, let's revise module five structures, the present simple. So when do we use the present simple? Let's see. They don't walk to school. They always take the bus. I get up early on Sundays. 
I always brush my teeth. He sometimes rides his bike. They never go to school on Fridays. Do you play football every day? Yes, I do. So when do we use the present simple? Wonderful. We use the present simple for habits and actions that happen regularly. I play. He plays. They play. Depending on the person, the simple present tense is formed by using the root form of the verb as in I play, you play, they play, and we play. But if the person is singular, we form it by adding an S. He plays. She plays. It plays. Remember, when a verb ends with a Y letter, such as in a study, we change the Y to I and add ES to it. Studies. When the verb ends with a hissing sound or an O sound, we add to it an ES, such as wash, washes, watch, watches, go, goes, do, does. In the sentences we form in the present sample, we can use the adverbs of frequency. Always, sometimes, or never. I always go to bed early. He sometimes does karate. They never eat in the classroom. What about asking in present simple? Yes, we use the verb do or does. Do you play? Does he play? Do they play? And we answer with yes or no. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. For more examples, please check the grammar reference in your student's book, pages 86 and 87. Practice time! He take the bus to school. Does. Very good. He karate every Wednesday. Does. Excellent. He does karate. They. Shopping at the weekend. Don't go. Excellent, my dears. Does she get up early every day? Yes, she does. Excellent, my dears. You did a great job. 
Now let's look at the pictures and answer the questions. Number one. Does he go shopping? No, he doesn't. He goes cycling. Number two. Do they walk to school? No, they don't. They take the bus. Number three. Does he play football? No, he doesn't. He does karate. Number four. Do they get up at seven o'clock? No, they don't. They get up at six o'clock. Excellent, everyone. Great job, everyone. You've reached the end of the lesson today. Thank you for listening. Good luck on your exams and bye-bye.